the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate. Prepare our hearts, we pray, O Lord our God, by your divine power, so that at the coming of Christ your Son, we may be found worthy of the banquet of eternal life, and merit to receive heavenly nourishment from his hands, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy that forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your Lord and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. time Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, went up on the mountain, and sat down there. Great crowds came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many others. They placed them at his feet, and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the deformed being made whole the lame walking, and the blind able to see, and they glorify the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for 
they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, where could we get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy such a crowd? And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, in our banquet of the Lord's word, us today, that's precisely what we find here is a, a banquet. Firstly, we find in the reading from the prophet Isaiah, he says, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich foods and choice wines, juicy rich foods and pure choice wines. This image of a rich, full, satisfying banquet is picked up in the gospel, but rather with a Eucharistic motif. Jesus is, has been preaching and healing, and the crowd has been with him, and they're hungry, and he doesn't want to send them away hungry. So he asks the disciples to provide something for them, and all they can come up with is seven loaves and a few fish. And the gospel says he ordered the crowds to sit down on the ground, then he took the seven loaves and the fish, thanks, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. This image of the Lord being so providing for us so richly and so fully and so forth, so nicely laid out in the gospel and in our first reading, but not to be overlooked. And in that image, in that psalm, we have two images of the Lord providing for us. The first image is that of him as a shepherd, providing for his sheep. And the second image is that of a very gracious and generous host, providing for the guest of his household. First, the image of the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. And then the image of that generous, gracious host. You spread a table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. This image of our Lord providing for us, taking care of us, meeting our needs, satisfying our wants, not allowing our hunger to be the main but rather to be fulfilled. A lot of interesting images for us in our readings today. As for the psalm, which we've heard so many times, I invite you to take it and spend some time with it and see how it speaks to you anew. Our God providing for us first as a shepherd and as a most generous host. A few days ago, I read a... too low. We've tried to correct that, and so I'll try to read that passage once again with regards to Advent. What Advent should be, a reflection by Father Ronald Goldheiser. He says, our Advent season opens with the words, be watchful. And this is sometimes translated, stay awake. What does it mean to be watchful, to stay awake? Well, we can be asleep to many things even while we are awake, not least during 
this Advent season. For better or for worse, our society has evolved to the point where, for all practical purposes, we celebrate Christmas during the days we are supposed to be preparing for it. Our Christmas tree and lights go up after Thanksgiving, and Advent has become the season in which we enjoy most of our Christmas celebrations. Admittedly, it's hard to break out of this, to be countercultural, and to have Advent be what it should be, a season to get in touch with our deepest yearnings. Like Mary, we want patiently, we wait patiently, preparing a womb within, within which Christ can be born. So how can we be watchful and stay awake? By staying awake to what's ultimately important. By staying awake to the truth that God is with us even when most everything in our lives and in the world seems to belie that. By staying awake to the only things that will really matter when we say farewell to this world and our loved ones. Love for each other, faith in God, and a heart grateful enough to let go and forgive all the angers, bitterness, and frustrations we've had in our lives. Advent invites us to be watchful and awake to what ultimately matters in life. And we can do that even inside our premature Christmas parties. A reflection on, a reflection on Advent by Brother Ronald Rollheiser. Dear friends, let us put our needs before the Lord this day as we offer our prayers. We pray for the church throughout the world that during this season of Advent we each may find ways to prepare our hearts and our lives for the coming of Christ, not only at Christmas, but whenever he comes and calls our name. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Francis, our Pope, that he may continue to lead us after the manner of Christ the Good Shepherd. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are infected with COVID-19, that they may, <coughs> the Lord may grant them healing and comfort. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving for having been protected from the ravages of hurricanes this past hurricane season. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for those among us who have lost loved ones and are now grieving, particularly at this time as it is so difficult to have the kinds of celebrations we're used to, the kinds of funeral um, that we're used to, that the Lord may grant all those who grieve comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in silence, we put before the Lord whatever needs we find most burdensome this day. For all these things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gracious, most gracious God, our needs, our prayers, our thoughts, are all focused on you as we ask that you deepen in our hearts a sense of Advent, preparing for the coming of your Son. May we always remain grateful to you, even though times are difficult. May we always remain generous in spirit to all those around us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name of our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered up to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm -hmm. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, our unworthy servant, with all the clergy, and with all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. For the body of Christ is preserved for eternal life. Amen.
But now as we celebrate the Eucharist in this digital format, we make our act of spiritual communion insofar as we are unable to receive the Eucharist physically. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. And mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wish you a wonderful day. Again, let us remember that we are still in the midst of a pandemic. We must practice our safety protocols for our personal well-being and that of our family, our friends, and our entire community. So if you go out, wear your face masks, socially distance in crowds, and of course, frequently wash and sanitize your hands. And if you don't feel well, don't go out. And also, we should take our flu shots, particularly those who are over 65. We should take our flu shots. That's a very, very important thing at this time of year. Flu shots are available free of charge at our government clinic. So please remember, take your flu shot as well as practicing our safety protocols. God bless you and God keep us all safe.